Return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. What is, whoops, I forgot my camera's a little out of whack there. Let's get that straightened up. What is going on, guys? Michael J. Crawford, the anti trigger here. Good to see you. Um, and so, Bird of Prey is saying, hey, what happened to last night's stream? Honestly, uh, the reason last night's stream was deleted was because we showed some copyrighted stuff, and mainly in the form of the theme song to Gilligan's Island. And I did not want to go through the hassle of fighting another copyright strike on something like that. So I just deleted it as soon as the show was over, rather than go through the headache. Um, so good to see you guys. Winston, Luke, Thomas, uh, Resolute Germ, Kronos. Yes, my God, Kronos has a wrench. Lord help us all. Uh, good to see you. Stromer is here. Good to see you, my friend, as is Alex. Yes, a live stream starts just as I'm thinking of going to bed. Well, that's what you get for, you know, living in other countries. You're not supposed to live in other countries because it's obviously not bedtime. It's only 4.14 where I am. Um, does Miles... Yes, Miles was there when, when I gave him the wrench. He, he, he was complaining about it, but he'll be all right. Uh, D. Newton is in the house. Says, hey to everybody. How you doing? And Darth is here as well. Darth Revan says, Andy Checker, you had the camera at normal height. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, because I'm a midget. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> damn you, Killigan. Yes. Um, Luke throws one of his evil European dollars into the chat. Thank you so much, Luke. I truly do appreciate it. And you want to see our lovely number 12 because lore does indeed make youtube go sir we are being hailed on screen what is your problem i am lore do you need help i have a youtube channel my youtube channel is lore reloaded let me guess their rubber band broke right i make youtube go There we go. Confirming, of course, that Lore Reloaded is indeed a packlid. Uh, Mr. Miles is here now. Good to see you, my old enemy. And uh, Josh says, looks good for only having a nap before work this morning. Yeah, I tell you, I am a little bush today. You guys kept me up kind of late last night. Uh, Anthony is here as well. Good to see you. Uh, uh so he's, uh, Darth is asking Shroom if he's going to see the probe, uh, Pope, the probe, uh, must have missed it is, uh, Shroom, are you going to, uh, Italy and must, and, oh yeah, oh, that's right, you've been in Italy, haven't you? Anyway, uh, Resolute says, you can live in other countries, but you need to live on U.S. time. Very true. You can, you, you, it is okay to live in other countries as long as you keep your time based on Eastern U.S. time. Uh, because if the rest of the U.S. has to go by the East Coast, then the least you guys in Europe can do is do the same thing. Uh, Daniels is here. Says, hello, Nancy Tricker. I'm back. Good to see you, Daniels. Uh, Spirits, fire soldier. Live long and prosper, my friend. Good to see you. Um, and Xavier Gamer is also in the house. Boy, the gang is all here today. Good to see you. Uh, the Pope is going to Ireland, isn't he? Well, I just didn't hear about that. But then again, I don't keep track of the Pope that much, not being a Catholic and all. Um, the inmates are indeed running the asylum. That is true. Uh, Kronos hates the responsibility. Well, I can take the wrench away, Kronos. You want me to take the wrench off? I can do that. In Ireland, we call cigarettes uh, 
the F word, and we uh, say that you're going to smoke a F word and the Pope is in Ireland. Yes, I know that's what you call cigarettes, and, and, and it's not just Ireland, it's the whole UK, isn't it, that, that you refer to cigarettes that way. The only reason I say the F word is because of the way that YouTube has been a little aggressive with trying to curb what they refer to as hate speech, and saying that particular word can be determined to be hate speech by some, even though we know it's just a term used for a, the, the classic term means a bundle of sticks, which is why the term then became kind of a cigarette, because a pack of cigarettes was like a bundle of sticks, and so there you go. Um, never been to Italy. Pope is coming here tomorrow. Okay. May, it must have been someone else. I, I apologize, Stromer. Someone was on vacation in Italy. I can't remember who it was, but one of you guys were. Janice is in the house, says, Lies, you should live on Greenwich Mean Time plus, Greenwich mean time plus one. No, I'm sorry, Janice. It is... East Coast US. That's the official time for the entire world. Uh, China has one time zone. Is that true, Thomas? I, I never actually bothered to look it up. Is that actually true that all of China is under one time zone? Did you know that time zones have never been mentioned when discussing time? That's a quote from Lore Reloaded, by the way. Um, also, demand those uh, those foreigners to speak English in their country. Absolutely. You know, I gotta say, since Luke is here, now look, I'm going to quote the great sage, uh, a Mr. Stephen Martin, who said he went to France and he found out that chapeau means hat. It's like those French people have a different word for everything. What is the deal? And your language is so hard to pronounce. What is wrong with that? Why, why don't you just get a nice, easy to pronounce language like, I don't know, English? Uh, YouTube is racist against English speakers. Yeah, uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, you know, I, and it's kind of funny you say that because I actually wonder how much their algorithm goes after, like, uh, offensive terms in other languages, since there are lots of people on YouTube that do their channels in other languages. I think that that's actually kind of interesting. Did I just call Ireland part of the UK? I apologize, uh, Bird of Prey, uh, and yeah, I, I get the, I, I, I swear, and I, you guys that are in Ireland know I love the Irish, and I absolutely, it's, it's definitely on my bucket list to spend some serious time in Ireland. That being said, I have such a tough time remembering Ireland versus Republic of Ireland, which one's in the UK, which one's not. I can never get it into my head. I apologize for that. But, yeah, so when I say the whole UK, I didn't mean anything derogatory to the Irish that are not, that are in the, is it the Republic of Ireland that's not the UK, or is it Ireland that's not in the UK? Whichever one, I apologize if I offended any of you, because I truly, uh, you know, from, I, I, I want nothing more than to spend a significant amount of time in your beautiful part of the world. Um... My old flatmate hit up for cigarettes by a 12-year-old Edinburgh Earl who, who asked him to spare of F-A-G, yes. And that's, and that's the thing, though. It's a, in, the, in the right context, it's like that's not an offensive term, obviously. But in another country, it is. So, huh. Uh, time zones weren't invented until 1950 to standardize times for airplane travel. Um I, uh, I I never actually researched the history of time zones. I would have assumed that they may not have been as standardized as they are, but like obviously Europe and the U.S. were always on different times. But prior to air travel, you wouldn't really notice it very much as far as the difference in time because of the simple fact that it took you days to get from one to the other. Um and I, he turns to me and says, I think that kid called me an F.A. That's funny. Uh, I wish we would do away with daylight savings. I'm with you there. I think it's silly. I think it's outdated. We should just get rid of it. Anti-checker, give me Cronus's wrench. I'll bear it and uh, smuggle it to Mordor to cast it into the fire. Easy. English are 80% German and French is allergic to German. Well, first of all, English is not 80% German. But, you know what, here, uh, I, but you know what, Luke? You are, and, and this is a singular honor, you will now be the only French moderator on this channel. So it is your solemn duty, Luke, to moderate any and all comments that are in French. 
History's always been trouble to me. Yeah, I'm not good with history. I mean, there's some things I know about, some things I don't, but I don't, I don't claim to be an expert. Um, when you come to Ireland, stand under the Republic of Ireland sign holding a map of the UK. I'm sure people will love that. Uh, time zones were invented for farming. That is very true. And that is, uh, or not the time zones, but daylight savings time was for, for farming. Uh, basically so that uh, we could adjust the time so kids could get up and, you know, for harvest time and all that garbage. Bird of Prey, Andy Trigger was a joke. Time zones were invented in the 1800s for rail travel. Okay, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. So I, I, uh, that's why I plead ignorance on it. Time zones uh, were used in maritime use much earlier, and that's why Bird of Prey was just saying the 1800s. I don't know the actual origin of it, but uh, we'll see. Well, we won't see. I don't know. I'm not going to bother to look it up because, frankly, I'm not that excited about time zones. Xavier says, I'm not Catholic, but my 80-year-old mom is, so I have to take care to uh, take care, I mean, assume you mean her, to church. And even though I'm not Catholic, I think I may be going to heaven because of that. I hope heaven is a cool space station. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, the, uh, the Catholic Church is an interesting church, that's for sure. German is one of English's parent languages, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let people believe that. We all know that English is actually the language that God spoke. And so don't, don't let people fool you. Um, English is a Germanic language according to the linguistics trees. That's only because we want the Germans to feel good because when the Germans don't feel good, they try to take over the world. And largely European invention with the old empire forcing, uh, Greenwich Mean Time to be a fiducial mark. Um, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'll be honest, since, since we're on the other side of the ocean, you know, Greenwich Mean Time means nothing to me. If, and the thing is, even at work, I get documents to say, at this time, Greenwich Mean Time, I have no clue what that is. I, I know, you know, I can't, I can't calculate that. Don't I have enough trouble uh, just figuring out that, because within the business, we do everything based on Eastern Standard Time, and it's like, oh, I get confused. Vive la France! Vive omelette du fromage et baguettes! I actually understood that threat, like all the French that I know. At least 75% of the chat needs to be mods. At l yeah, we got to get there, you know, so I think we need a few more mods. Uh, it's a romantic language based on Latin. Um, are, you are you talking about French? Well, it's still impossible to pronounce properly, and only French people are snobby enough to actually use it. Uh, when is Where is my notification? Well, I'm right here. Hey, I'm on. Right now. Chrono says, I love smart peeps. I do too. I prefer smart people over dumb people every day. Uh, Mr. Miles says, Anti-Trekker, in all caps, if English was good enough for Jesus, then it's good enough for you. Yes! See? Get it right. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Winston's, uh, Winston's uh, uh, or Janice is saying to Winston, why did you mention Greek? I'm not sure what that was about, but uh, might have been on one of our more serious discussions. I was talking about Greek and Hebrew when looking at ancient texts. Don't forget Jesus was a California surfer looking to uh, from the Middle East. Yes, we all know that. Come on. Everybody knows Jesus had blonde hair and blue eyes. Um, Anthony D says, cowabunga. anti trekker there's GMT time and Irish Standard Time, which is the same thing because Republic. <laughs> um, uh, it's what all time zones are marked from Eastern Central. Oh, I, I know. I, I know that GMT time is like is the standard bearer for, and, but and everything is like plus or minus from GMT. I just can't stand it. Do I speak any Spanish? Uh, barrito, taco, enchilada. That's about it. Both French and English are Latin-based. Um, it's Eng I didn't think English was Latin-based. But, like I said, I'm not a linguist, so I wouldn't know. Well, according to the Bible, in the city, uh, the city of heaven is 2,400 kilometers squared. Way bigger than the Death Star. You did a very poor quality video a few months back. Did a very poor quality video a few months. Yeah, so uh, that is an interesting thing. But, you see, that's only the city. Uh, if you, if you read Revelation, which our church is actually starting a big old Bible study on Revelation right now, but if you read Revelation, that city is like 
the one city that will be on Earth, but there's still a whole planet around it for you to explore and have fun in, I, I assume, you know, walk naked or whatever. Uh, Luke says, anti trigger Yeah, I knew that uh, that was about the only words you could understand. Well, thank you, Luke, for knowing me so well. I truly appreciate it. Um, Josh says, English is more German-based than Latin-based. But you see, all languages should be English-based. That's the problem. What is Klingork based on? Well, theoretically, it's based on the uh, James Doohan-inspired Klingon language. It's just that with all the prosthetics and stuff, the pronunciation sounds very different. And that's why, like, if you say the same thing, uh, for example, if you say, uh, I don't care which in Klingonese would be, Tashachve, right? And in with the Klingorks, it would be, Tashachve! And, but it's the same thing. It's just that the, because of the prosthetics and because of the way they're directed, it comes across very different. Um, English is partly, partially Latin and partially Germanic. Okay. Well, I just figure everything's based on English. That's why English seems like it's based on everything. Everything is based on English. That's we got to get that right. Um, so shouldn't Latin be a parent language? No, Latin is the child language of English. Everything is based on English. Remember that, people. Everything is based on English. <laughs> um, so uh, POS is French for awesome. <laughs> Andy Trucker, your Spanish has a Klingon accent. <laughs> yes. Did you see Laura's communicator video? I did. And in fact, I put a comment on it that he never mentioned that in uh, Star Trek Three they never say transwarp. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I did see that one. Um, and he's got an interesting point as far as the universal translator is concerned, but I think he's reading too deep into it. But then again, that's lore. Uh, English is a mess, so it's partially Latin-based. Uh, once thought um, Latin and then normal French, but uh, Norman French. But the dominant substate is Germanic because of the Saxons, Danes, Vikings. No, you see, you got it all backwards, Alex. Everything is just based on English. It makes it so much simpler to just say that. It really is. Uh, we have Iron Wolf, Brad Wolf, and me. The wolves are taking over. I tell you, and you, Bad Wolf, and Brad Wolf, you guys get me so confused. I always I have to struggle to remember to say Bad Wolf or Brad Wolf because, you know, when... Yeah. Um, English... Uh, is the Borg of languages. We took the best of all and made it our own. Um, okay. Would you get bored in heaven being happy and naked all the time? I don't think that's possible. To be happy and naked... Well, the naked part, I guess, it kind of doesn't really matter. But being happy all the time and being bored would be mutually ex exclusive. Uh, Luke throws a couple of his fake... Uh, European dollars in there and says, can you imitate Arnold Schwarzenegger? Get to the chopper! That's a, you know, California and all that. I'm not, I'm, I don't do a great Schwarzenegger. I gotta be honest. And are we talking about um, uh, English, English, or American English? There is only one English, Resolute German. That is American English. Uh, we just call it English to appease the English because we want them to not feel bad at each other uh, about it. And we also don't want the Germans to feel bad, so we let them believe that English is based on German when it's really the other way around. But everybody knows good old American is the real first language. That's the language of the Lord. Uh, the earlier Latin and Gaelic were largely diluted by the Germanic languages of those invasions. Yes. Um, I thought the same thing when he said transform. Yeah, I absolutely did. I, that so popped into my head. Um, English is God's language. Yes. <laughs> so we add our wolf our names. Oh, man, don't even, don't know. Uh, and the English party, uh, or is the English is partly based on Latin, the word. No, it's not. You see, Mr. Miles, you keep saying it, but no, Latin is based on English. But the word sinistra is Latin for left-handed. English turned into sinister to mean evil. Um, yeah, but you see, actually, it's, we know the left-handed people are evil. I'm left-handed, so, and I have a goatee. What more proof do you need that I'm evil? 
Uh, I forgot uh, Anglo, Anglo, ah, Anglos as well as uh, Germanic invaders. Yes. Uh, Random says hello, by the way. Oh, okay. Is she on right now? Because if she is, I'm just going to have to slap her. But uh, she's awesome, so I won't slap her. Arnold, I need your help. Please, people, you're trying to kill me. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you, if, um, I, well, if wanted to be more uh, antagonistic, I could say that we could remove Greek words from the English Western civilization will probably fall. Well, except that the Greek are just a bunch of welfare rats we know. So whatever. Do you have the Bible translated in the original Klingon? No, I would love to get a Klingon Bible. I know that they exist, but I don't have one. John Kana, come with me if you want to live. Uh, it's obvious English is the master language. Um, yeah, if you watch any sci-fi, you'll see that every alien race, regardless of where they are, speak English. You're right. Luke says, have you seen Looper? I have. I actually liked Looper. Uh, Ryan Johnson is not 100% bad. There is English and then there is superior English. Americans speak superior English. Correct, Mr. Miles. You and I can agree on that. The Mormons are very American in that, according to their scripture, Christ was a New Yorker. Well, we all know. I mean, come on. Have you never seen any of the documentaries about Jesus up on the cross going, hey, hey, what's going on here? You know, that it's, yeah. Anti-tricker, hooves or feet? No comment. Your Celtic origins enhance your evilness by a factor of 2.5. Oh, I, I thought it was only a factor of 2, but that's good to know. Mr. Miles says, so am I Bad Wolf? No, Bad Wolf is Bad Wolf. You are Mr. Miles. Uh, Kronos, trying to get her on, but she has a stream at the moment. Oh, okay, so she is streaming. In. She's just, all right, you know, all right, everybody go to her stream. <laughs> I was going to say, let's go bombard her stream and say, why do you keep streaming at the same time as Anti-Trekker? You're picking on him. Yeah, I see that uh, she's, she's streaming about something uh, that uh, I actually talked to her briefly about on through Patreon. Uh, the Star Trek Discovery family-friendly thing. She uh, she posted a thing about it. I said I was, I was planning on doing a video about it, but I canceled it because she was going to talk about it. And I didn't want to look like I was trying to steal her thunder. Um so everybody go over to Random Gamer's stream right now and just say, anti Trekker says hi, but you need to stop streaming whenever he's on. <laughs> um, does Combadge not train say Klingon since they talk in it all the time? That's a good question, you know, and that's the funny thing. Uh, the, uh, the, that's, it's kind of funny because of the simple fact that they say, oh, the universal translator just always makes it so that you can understand. However, uh, the, the the simple fact is that, yeah, you hear people speak Klingon, you hear people speak... Like, I remember there was an episode where Picard uh, tells a Romulan that it was very rude to say something, and he speaks something back in Romulan, and it's like, wait a minute, shouldn't the universal translators make that impossible? So, hmm. Am I the anti-trekker? No, you are not. Uh, anti-trekker is left-handed, a goatee, his hair slicked back. The only thing missing is horns and the red skin. Yeah, well, that's what bleach is for, man. Um, uh, Jesus has never mentioned the Bible from Lord. <laughs> yes. Uh, Alex says, I. Okay, Alex, you. Um, Chrono says, Quantum? Yes, quantum. Quantum is the answer to everything. Uh, Luke says, anti Trekker, I saw Looper all th throughout The Last Jedi when I saw it in the theater. I, you know, I didn't. I, I didn't see a lot of similarities with Looper and Last Jedi. I think Looper was a far better film. But, uh, so, oh, stupid phone. <laughs> you were trying to say something and you just said, I. That's all right, Alex. Um, Shomer. I'll have you no good, sir, and uh, Darth Raven will be back here. Herb oh, man. Herbino English I Irish dialect is the real English. Uh, sorry, Irish dialect may be a good version of English, but the only true English is American. Uh, and so <laughs> I'm not going to even say that, Jay. Uh, show her you can't bear. Okay. Steal all her thunder. Yeah, I, I tell you, I did. 
honestly, there was there's this whole thing about uh, I can't remember the actress's name, but the girl that plays Tilly is on uh, Twitter where she's talking about how great it is that the seven year old kid is inspired by her and all these kids that are not uh, normies, basically that are you know differently abled, we'll say, uh, you know, find Tilly inspira inspiring, and it's like okay, so she's sitting there talking about how awesome Tilly is as an inspiration to little kids on a show where Tilly herself drops the F-bomb. We have naked Klingons, rape, torture, all, and, and it's like, this is not a children's show. Sorry. I'm, I'm, so random is streaming about that now, so I'm going to shut up. Uh, it's logical to assume that any interstellar species would adopt a single language for communica communication and commerce. English has shown its superiority as a language of trade. You are right. Klingon Command offers new English uh, so that we can talk in front of the crew freely. <laughs> um, Anti-checker, English is not the core language. Your computer translates everything for you. Mr. Miles is actually typing in Gauld language right now. Well, that's an interesting supposition, Luke, but I have to disagree with you because you're French. Um, have you taken your pills today? Not yet. I'm trying to get random to say hi. <laughs> That's all right. She's all right. She's busy. Let her do her stream. I was just messing around. Don't don't go bugging her or anything. Um, English is such a good trade language. Whoa! And uh, because I literally just picked up a word that like uh, that likes and uses them. <laughs> um. Luke is typing in an accent. You can hear it every time. He's like an Inspector Clouseau of the chat. Uh, okay, but in her stream, uh, I did it in her stream so laggy, so I couldn't see your response. No worries. Um, like I said, she, she's, uh, she's good people. So I'm, even though she's streaming at the same time as me, I'm okay with it. I'm just going to give her a hard time. Uh, new SJW crap. A vagina is not exclusive in, uh, in, Inclusive and should be replaced with the words front hole. May I borrow a gun and shovel him? <laughs> Who said that? Come on, Darth. I, I, uh, no. Ancient is so much cooler. Ancient, um, oh, English is such a good trade language because, uh, but yeah, but I, I'm not sure what you mean by ancient there. English was used by the ancients. Yeah, well, we know it's in the Bible. The Bible's written in English, right? Um, you know that only top-of-the-line models can even talk. Yeah, you see those bigots from the Federation. Random said you probably have an ext an, uh, your entire fan base with you, even though she's streaming too, except that she is not here. So, no, your entire fan base. Yeah, see? See? You can prove her wrong right there. Um, um, Admiral Brocode is in the house. Good to see Admiral. Says, my boss asked me today, why did I hand in my report? And I said, Quantum. He did not find that funny. Now I'm working this weekend. <laughs> I'm sorry, Admiral. Uh, yes, remember, only use quantum as an excuse if you know that the other person is a nerd. Because most people will not get it. And of course, if you know they subscribe to my channel, that makes it easier. Uh, Chinese is now the most spoken accent. You mean, like, yeah, language. <laughs> Interstellar visitor. Oh, wow. Oyu Oma Mama is the whale probe. Save the humpbacks. Okay. Random uh, started streaming like 90 minutes before use. Yeah, so she should be done by now. Uh, the live action Inspector Gadget versus uh, The Last Jedi. Well, I haven't seen the live action Inspector Gadget, to be honest with you, because it looks like such crap. So I would probably say that it's better than The Last Jedi because... Even though it doesn't look good, it doesn't look offensive. And yes, the front hole story is real. That makes no sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. Why would you say that? Um, Anti-Checker, did you see Star Wars Resistance trailer? It's super strange. Now, I heard there's a big tizzy about it, but I have not seen it yet. Ancients are racing SG-1. You haven't gotten to them yet. Uh, in fact, I, I'm sure what we got uh, in the most recent episode was a hint to them. They're, this is the one where they went to the planet 
that they actually went to like back in the 40s and they found the old guy there and there was like a bunch of different languages on the walls and they found that the atomic uh, scale or the atomic uh, periodic table is actually a language to most aliens. Um, Luke said, Andy Checker actually pointed out that the real SJW commentary is that there's is that they left out that they left out for a while. Um, I must have missed something there. Um, Vol is that Volkil Van has joined us and says, ah, man, chat keeps jumping around. Hey, hello, anti Trekker. First time seeing anything from your channel. Well, good to see you. And I'm sorry if I completely butchered your name, but good to see you. And yes, here we talk about front holes, quantum, and whatever else happens to be. Quantum isn't the only answer. Kronos, quantum is and is not the only answer. Anyway, I thought the SG Ancients language is more like Latin. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. Do you watch Lore streams? Generally, no, but that's mainly because he streams at times that I don't happen to be sitting at my computer. Uh, check Doors Discord and stay safe from window and sharp objects. Uh-oh. Let me see. What'd you do? Oh, okay. So that's your the article on that? All right. Healthline says... Using the medical term vagina is not gender inclusive. That makes no sense. That really makes sense. No sense. Uh, so here's the article. Uh, uh, Clayton is here. It says, I'm here from Random Game User Stream. And, and hello there. Let's get chatty. <laughs> you tell Random, it's always good to hear from her. And I hope that she is doing well. Um, and yes, Jess, I am the poop emoji. That's me. Uh, the what? So, yeah, so this article is, yeah, the health line has claimed that health dispar disparities and higher rates of HIV and STI, I assume that's supposed to be STDs, uh, observed in the LGBTQIA. <laughs> what is I and A? Ugh. communities are due to discrimination in the sex ed world so the california-based health information providers adopted the gender inclusive term front hole instead of the place of the medical term vagina in their latest lgbtqia safe sex guide that is stupid beyond belief i mean because here's the thing you if you are if if you don't have a vagina you don't have a front hole so uh. <sighs> luke thank you so much throws five of his evil european dollars and wants to get uber chat number one going for the new kids so we're gonna get to see the greatest star wars moment in the history of star wars here let me get that cute up here you're wrong your highness I am lore reloaded, a lore master, like my father before me. So be it, lore master. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. <laughs> you will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> and there it is. That is the actual fate of Lore Reloaded, in case you're ever wondering. And that is actually Lore Reloaded's voice, for those of you that are new. Yeah, uh, Jay, uh, yeah, L-G-B-T-Q-A-I-Z-D-A. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, why don't you just say, not straight white men? You know, that, why don't you just do that? And that way you can you can just get it all out of the way and just say, we care about not straight white men. You know, screw it. Just just call yourselves what you are. Bigoted against straight white men. I, I'm so tired of the, how many freaking letters do you need to add to it? And But, but here's the thing, like the, the front hole thing. 
is that makes no sense to me. We're talking about a medical term. I mean, it even says in the article, this is about the medical term for sexual education. So it would be as if I was to say, okay, kids, we're going to talk about viruses and how they can enter in through, uh, you know, through your respirating, through your mouth or your nose. And then people say, oh, that's offensive. You need to call it your face holes. That makes no sense. It's less descriptive. It's less specific. And it does not make sense um you know so whatever um uh but yes if, if you identify as non-binary or a man you can't have a vagina yes you can if you are you know what, if you want to go through this whole gender is fluid thing yes you absolutely can if you are born with a vagina but you identify as a man i don't care first of all i think that's stupid but if you if that's how you are fine you're a man with a vagina you are not a man with a front hole because you know what front hole makes me think of belly button honestly <sighs> that it makes no sense whatsoever yeah penis is going to be lower horn that's absolutely uh, it, 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 yeah it just uh or are they just going to say, uh, you know, for the male genitalia, or what we used to refer to as male genitalia, will be uh, inverted front hole? You know? Because if it's not LGBTQIAHGNTIYENDL, then it's not special and you don't need special protections. It's a political move. Yeah. But like I said, let's just for. Okay, let's, so here's what we're going to do we're going to change from this day forth. We are no longer going to be LGBT, LGBTQ, LGBTQI, or QIA, or QRS, or TUV, or any of that, right? So we're going to be there. That is our new form from now on, not straight white male, NW or NSWM. That is it from now on. That's how I'm going to refer to it, NSWM. From now on, the NSWM community. Screw it. And Thomas throws $1.99 into the chat, says, shut your face hole and make take my money. Number four, you got it. Well, um, all right, well, let's beam down to the planet. Um, energize, Mr. Scott. Hi, Captain. <laughs> Welcome aboard the USS Discovery. There's got to be some kind of other universe, right? Please, send me back. Oh, my God, send me back. I beg you, no, send me back. Oh. <laughs> Is it, no, I say, NSWM. Can we, can we all agree to use that from now on? Seriously, we all need to spread the word NSW, and we're going to start a thing right here, right now. We're creating a brand new term. So whatever we're refer referring to, what other people would call the LGBTQ, and then throw in other letters, community, it's just the NSWM for not straight white male. Uh, so I think we can do that. Chrono says, I'm a nerd forever. Absolutely nerd power. But you see, nerds are horrible. Uh, I'm loving the Orwellian polic policing of language. It makes no sense. How do you try to change what medical clinical terms are for parts of the body? That does not make any sense. Well, SJWs usually chalk out of their ass, so you need to say word hole and not mouth so you don't discriminate. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Janice says, anti checker well, according to them, they would also be... Uh, wrong because straight man can call cisgender heterosexual or something please stop making my brain no no it's just yeah non-straight white male that is what they are um now it's not third leg i think it's inverted front hole but yeah inverted front hole is the new name for male genitalia i tried to log into the lore reloaded account that you gave me the info it didn't work oh sorry about that he must have changed the password too easy to mix up with it, not safe for work. Well, I, I understand, but okay, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. 
if you have something better than NSWM, uh, but I still think that's really what we what we need. Bird of Prey sells five bucks in and says, whatever is the longest Uber chat, I need to use the restroom and don't want to miss much. Um, hmm, that's probably Bat Turd, I think. It's over a minute, so we'll get Bat Turd going here. Oh man, that last that last one gets me every single time. So Entertainment Nihilist throws an interesting uh, wrench into this and suggests ASWM for anti-straight white male. Um, that could work. And so let me uh, so, but anti-straight white male versus not straight white male. So I let you. You will have to decide on that. That's something that we need to start. For our movement here. Kronos throws 20 bucks in the chat and says, please just make the insanity stop. You want Uber chat two and three. You want Uber chat number two and three, or do you want mega chat number two and three? I want to make sure I clarify because for 20 bucks, you could, you could do, do either one because you, you've been such a friend to the channel, Kronos. Um, so you tell me which you would prefer. Um, Oh man, and Resolute wants to make everybody suffer with the eye bleach for Mega Chat number one. We'll get to that just as soon as I clarify what Kronos wants. Boy, we, we're going to have a fun filled show here in just a moment. As soon as I get, uh, wait, just wait to hear from you, Kronos. Because I'll do Uber if I don't hear from you, but I want to make sure that that is indeed what you want. Because I don't want you to feel ripped off. Um, and. So, still waiting, Kronos. You, you, I don't didn't see you answer. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go for Uber then since you did. Oh, you want Mega 2 and 3. Okay, so we're going to do the full Mega round robin here. And since Kronos came first, we're going to do his first. And then we're going to finish it with Bird of Prey's favorite. And welcome, those of you that have just joined us from Random Stream. Nice to meet all of you. Uh, you're about to see the, you know, I know a lot of channels throw Super Chat rewards up there when people throw money at the channel. This is the best Super Chat reward in the history of Super Chats. It is the Super Turds. In the great hall of the Justice League, there floats the world's four greatest turds. Created from cosmic indigestion, Super Turd! Wonder Turd! Bat Turd! Aqua Turd! 
and those two junior super turds, Lore Reloaded and Punchy the Wonder Cat. Yes, coming to a theater near you, much better than the Justice League movie, although I am uh, in the pre-planning stages for a full Justice League review. That's going to be a lot of fun. However, all right, so all you guys that are visitors from Random, uh, if you have bleach, you may want to prepare to pour it into your eyeballs, because if you notice, we have a tendency to make fun of lore uh, reloaded around here, and you're about to see... Lore Reloaded in all of his glory. Here it comes. I may have a shit. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean shit. Take the bloody shit. I wait for the ultimate bomb girl. Didn't know is that in the modern gender fluid reality it is lore reloaded. Look at that arm hair. By the way, especially for those of you from the random channel, you know, Lore did propose to her in the form of a super chat recently. She could have all of this. Whew, yes, so that is quantum of the force danny throws five fake canadian dollars into the chat thank you so much danny while you're uh, i truly appreciate it. it says give me number nine please mr anti-trekker and keep up the good job well first of all we're not that formal around here you don't have to call me mr anti-trekker just uh the great and all-powerful anti-trekker is fine but absolutely you want number nine we are gonna i do actually like that one a lot and here it comes i am lore reloaded here to get this entire thing started here for lore <laughs> you just tripped over something that was so obvious <laughs> yes we do make fun of lore reloaded a lot around here and um so the the funny thing is is that uh the, these animations that you see come from my son joshua and he did a great animation just called drax laughs too much uh which was based on the fact that drax was laughing at everything in guardians of the galaxy volume 2 and this was just kind of an extension on that you can see his video on his channel the scarved insect um uh, anti Trekker is obsessed with Lord marrying random. He can't ever let it go. He brings up every single live stream now. I, I only bring it up because, come on, all these people came over from Random's channel. They may not know that this is the guy that proposed to her. So I want them to see what their fearless leader may be marrying in the near future so that they can encourage her to look elsewhere. Um, uh, Roz Animates taking off. You have a good one. Ha take care now. Um, and let's see, James says, uh, I give not, uh, I give not hate. Glad you liked it. Just saw a funny uh, sci-fi geek. Oh, I must have missed something there, Jess, because, uh, I know a lot of guys, a lot of you guys were commenting while those 
we're going. Oh, I see Acid has joined us and joined us in the middle of the eye bleach session. Good to see you, Acid. Um, and so, but yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, Random and Laura sitting in a tree. Well, the problem is, is that Laura sitting in a tree would break the tree. But yeah. Um, say Suri quote today when you hear, uh, hear her what to dress up for Halloween. Siri replied, dress as a bird and take a selfie and it goes to the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> that statement couldn't be any I could see that. Um, Andy Checker, this weekend, 2001 A Space Odyssey in IMAX at AMC. Ooh, ooh, I would love to do that if I had the time. Unfortunately, I don't. Um... Darth Revan says, public announcement. anti Trekker is standing up. He is only three feet tall. Don't listen to the fake news He's uh, that he's tall. He's, he owns stilts. Oh, Revan. Why are you obsessed with the idea that I am three feet tall? I really don't get that. I genuinely don't understand. GWD says, anti Trekker, got to head out. Check out the movie and series Limitless if you haven't already. I've n I have not, but... Uh, gee, I'll just throw that on my list of 8 million things to do, but thank you. Uh, I will I will take that under consideration. You take care now. Um, and let's see here. Uh, random, are you... I think uh, someone said earlier the Random was grabbing a bite to eat, so she might not be here. She's probably fixing her lunch or whatever, uh, having Laura fix her a sandwich. Um, so, let's see. His day job is a garden gnome. I actually have a few garden gnomes in front of my house that you guys would appreciate. Uh, I wish I had pictures of them with me to show you. But one of them uh, is Captain Kirk, only as a gnome. One of them is Mr. Spock as a gnome. One of them is Kirk fighting a Gorn gnome, which is really cool. And then the last one is a red shirt gnome, and it's lying on the ground dead. And then right underneath, you know, where its base, there's a little plaque that said, Join Starfleet, they said. Have lots of fun, they said. So... Um, he thinks you're short because you look like a character from South Park called Dildo Swaggins. I don't think I look like Dildo Swaggins. <laughs> oh, thank God it's Laura Random. When they said Anti Trekker was talking about marrying Laura, I said, Dear God, Laura and Anti Trekker. No, no, no. That would never happen. Uh, if you could binge a movie series and time was no obstacle for you, what series would you watch from start to end? <sighs> You know, probably, I, I would love to binge the entire Marvel series again because, man, there's so many of them now. I mean, it would literally take two days of non-stop watching to watch all the Marvel movies now. Um, that would be fun. Uh, I think that would probably be the most fun. And so, yeah, I'm going to go with Marvel. Uh, it would definitely not be Star Wars because of what they've done recently. Confirmed uh, on her first stream, Anti-Trekker... Uh, confirmed it oh mrs anti trekker confirmed it yeah uh, mrs anti trekker did say that i was three feet tall but that was a joke <sighs> what's wrong with your chair i had to retire mine when welding wasn't effective anymore huh i'm not sure what you mean uh picks yeah my gnomes i don't have any handy i wish i did uh if you were to create an evil empire for the Federation to go up against, what would it be like? Interesting idea. Um, I would probably... Well, see, the thing is, is that the good ones are already taken. Like, the, the, if you take a warrior caste system like the Klingons, that's good. If you do an intelligent, uh, military, duty-driven species like the Romulans, that's already done. And then you have the Borg, which is the ultimate... And the pro and then even like military dictatorship like the Dominion has been done. So I don't know. Um, I would probably try to come up with an idea that was alien in a way like the Borg are. Something that the Federation never faced before. Um, something that was just totally different. But it would take a lot of thought to come up with it. Uh, everyone Google image dildo swagons and say, and say if you think anti Trekker looks like him. Oh, jeez. Now I'm going to have to, okay, I don't, let me look up, uh, let's see. So, you're saying, you really think I look like that? That's just mean. 
I, I don't think I look at all like Dildo. First of all, he has a full beard. I just have a goatee. Um, anyway, I love words. Good. I like words, too. Uh, the real reason we don't see Mrs. Anti-Trekker is so it doesn't expose Anti-Trekker's lack of ideas. <laughs> Star Trek's one through six, and yes, it includes five. That, I would do that. The Star Trek... The, uh, but you see, he said the entire franchise from beginning to end. So for Star Trek... Even if you were just doing movies, that would really mean Star Trek through Star Trek the Motion Picture through Star Trek Insurrection. And the problem is, is that, you know, yeah, five was bad. And then then you have the next gen films that were so out of character for them. So I don't know. I, I just don't know that I would get as much joy out of it as I would out of watching a franchise that I think was good from beginning to end. Um, what's the best prank you've ever done? The best one I've done was dark, and I will tell you, but... Uh, it was really bad. Um, I'm not much of a prankster, really. Um, I know that Lore and I did a thing. This, this was actually a lot of fun. This was long before he was called Lore Reloaded or I was called the Anti-Trekker. He was called Losoyo at the time, and I was called Rational Roundtable. And uh, we were both uh, had put up videos about philosophy and religion and that kind of thing. And here's the thing. So we started intentionally a feud uh, on YouTube where people thought we were generally there was a misunderstanding we, we we didn't we were getting mad at each other and getting more and more and more mad at each other and then eventually I started I did a video where I said you know I'm sick and tired of of um Losoyo with his crap and then there's a pounding on my door and it was him and he busts in and shoots me and so we we did it was a lot of fun to do that and it caught a lot of people off guard because we live on two different at the time we lived in two different parts of the country and he came out to visit me he was in Tennessee I was in Oregon at the time um which one is five Cybok yes Cybok is five so the precursor to Michael Burnham um all right Kronos so now you get to share uh Lasoyo. <laughs> yes, that was his name. Uh and Mr. Miles, that's spelled correctly, yes. Um why not move the fish cam overlay to the upper quadrant so it doesn't cover you? Um oh I could do that. I could put oops, that's the wrong let me see, where is the fish cam? Uh always is that no. There we go. And so we can move it up there. You guys prefer it up there? I can keep it up. Up, up there. Um, uh, lore, hold the lore. Whole lore. <laughs> yeah. Acid says, Andy Trekker, send final version techni technical difficulties. Oh, oh, I can't wait to see. I will check it out after the stream, Acid. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, and so... Let's see here. So how are the fish doing? Uh, Shannon throws 10 bucks into the chat. Thank you so much. It says, what about the parasites from Conspiracy? Talking about insidious and horrific enemy Super 12 and Uber 2, if possible. Ooh, look at you guys trying to negotiate here. You figure, okay, 10 gets a mega chat. So I want to get one ring. Yeah, okay. All right. And so... Uh, so I'll, you know what though, because that's such a generous donation, I'm going to do that for you. So Super 12, of course, is everybody's favorite. Speaking of Lore Reloaded, the true origins of Lore Reloaded. Sir, we are being hailed. On screen. What is your problem? I am Lore. Do you need help? I have a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Lore Reloaded. Let me guess, their rubber band broke, right? I make YouTube go. Oh, man. And so, yes, so that's... And Lore was nice enough to do that uh, recording for me. And in addition to that, Shannon would like to see Uber number two because we saw the Lore Master, so what we really need is the Lawn Master. Hello, everybody. Is your front yard now growing according to your plan? 
Ah, you unable to eradicate those pesky rebellious crackers. <laughs> Call us. I am the Lawn Master. And everything will grow according to my design. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> And uh, Luke says, I could see a pitch for a civil war inside of the Federation post-Voyager area. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know that a civil war in the Federation would really work. Um, I would rather see, honestly, a, a genuine threat. So I kind of get used to now the fish cams up there. A genuine threat to the Federation. Um, and maybe something that would force the Federation's Romulans, etc. to look, work together. Um, and Acid says, what? anti are not drinking. Don't want to be the only alcoholic on online. Well, first of all, I, you know, Acid, that I never drink during my daytime shows. I only drink when I do late night shows. And that's honestly the only time I ever drink. So is Palpy a thing? Well, yeah, you just saw it. Um, my ex-best friend screwed me over and tried to turn my family against me for fun, so I made a dating profile that had him meet her at a bar and nobody showed up, but I was watching. Well, that's kind of mean. Uh, what's the story behind Punchy the Wonder Cat? Well, the story behind Punchy the Wonder Cat is pretty funny, actually. So there was a time... Lore does a lot of... Lore Reloaded does a lot of live streams. And he has a couple of cats in his house. And, and it's very common for his cat to be sitting on the back of his chair while he's doing his live stream. And one time the cat was hopping off of the chair. And, and Lore had next to him a bunch of Eagle Moss starships and stuff. Which, you know, they're expensive and all that. Even though he gets them for free. But, you know, they're, they're still pricey. And the cat was about to jump down onto the starships. And so what Lore did was when the cat was jumping down, he kind of pushed the cat out of the way so that it wouldn't hit the starships. And everybody started this joke about how he's punching the cat. And so, and this kept going and kept going. And people just kept saying that Lore is punching his cat. And so then when we did the Super Turds animation, I was like, okay, Punchy the Wonder Cat. That's got to be a thing. And that's, that's how it happened. Um... So, oh great, the turtis moved uh, from lower right to the upper right. Kiss off the anti trekkers forehead. Yeah, well, like, I can put it back if you don't like it up there. It does, it does seem kind of out of place. You see, I gotta figure this all out. Uh, um, a civil war would be a genuine threat, though, I think, most dangerous. Well, but you have to, here's the thing, Miles, if, and, and, and Luke as well. If you want to do a civil war arc in the federation you have to come up with a good reason now and i don't know that you know i could see a couple of things that could well i don't know i don't know what would you have a civil war over that's the real question um uh you're not alone dude okay thank you jez uh, Brad says, you are not, you are not, brother, pound that beer. I'm not what? No, I'm not drinking today. Don't drink during the day. Uh, if you tend to lean to that side, move the fish to the other side. Yeah, see, that's the problem. I do, I kind of, I'm, I'm such a weirdo when it comes to that. So you're saying, like, if I move, let me bring up the fish, I can move the fish over here. And keep leaning this way. I'll try to do that for right now. But yeah, I do have a tendency to lean this way. Um, let's see. We're all drinking during the stream. Well, everybody but me, I guess. Um, what if it was a dog? Well, then it would be, I don't know, the punch dog. The punchy, I don't know how, punchy, the wonder dog. Um, Civil War Federation has sparked over the front hole controversy. <laughs> Oh man, you 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 see, but it wouldn't be a controversy for the Federation. They'd all just be, of course, it's called a front hole. Yeah, I just, you know, we just we need to we need to do a special edition of of Star Trek: The Next Generation. So we have like Doctor Crusher going, Captain, he was shot in the front hole. You know, <laughs> the mirror universe invaded Starfleet would be cool, full on invasion. I could see something like that. 
an aggressive mirror universe invasion. The Federation will be caught off guard and they're not used to dealing with that. Uh, my cat is Pouncer. Pouncer the Wonder Cat. Well, Pouncer the Wonder Cat then and Punchy the Wonder Cat could fight, but the problem is, is that Punchy's only uh, Punchy's powers only work when Punchy gets punched. Josh is heading off to work in about 30 minutes. I'm going to be heading off to work in a little bit myself, actually. Uh, Mary says, not me, don't drink. Well, there you go. And that's perfectly okay. I have no problem with that whatsoever. A Federation civil war uh, over going back to a capitalist system enticed by Ferengi secret agents. Uh, but you see, I don't think that could ever work. And the problem is, is that when you start talking about anything that has to do with a conservative concept like capitalism versus the social communism type situation that they have going in next gen era i think a lot of people would, would they wouldn't go for it because right now everybody behind the production of star trek is so liberal that there's no way they would actually give it a fair shake my pitch would be to involve former maquis officers speaking up and presenting evidence gathered during the dominion war including about section 31 well but then how do you turn that into an all-out shooting war Toronto says, I would love to be a Horda. I don't think I would. That kind of, what do you do as a Horda? You just tunnel through the dirt and that's pretty much it. Cornhole, not front hole, yes. Uh, what I want to see is a Kelvin version of the Mirror Universe. That would actually be, I would like to see that too, but I, I don't know. I think the Kelvin timeline is dying a horrible death at this point. Mirror Universe invading the Federation will be Star Trek Discovery Season 3. I would not be surprised. And of course, yet Kirk still doesn't know anything about the Mirror Universe just a few years later. Cape Fear Stormtroopers in the house is a civil war in Trek could be started by a group that built the Kelvin Timeline battleship. And those were trying to keep them from gaining control by force. Except that that's in the Kelvin Timeline and the Kelvin Timeline cannot be on a TV series. The changelings wouldn't work now, but them starting a civil war on purpose would have been a good story. Yeah, that could have. But yeah, the changelings are kind of out. Uh, Brad says, my dog's name is Wesley Crusher. I say shut up, Wesley, a lot. Oh, man. Oh, that would be awesome. I would I, I need to rename our dog to Wesley Crusher so I can say that. Um, a Federation civil makes no sense. You see, that's the thing. I can't, I'm trying to think of a reasonable way that a Federation civil war could actually happen. And I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, just got six years of sobriety. Mary, congratulations. And, you know, I, no joke. I know that, I, yes, I do drink on my late night streams and stuff. But that's awesome. Because anybody that's struggled with those kinds of things, six years, that's an incredible achievement. So congratulations. And Trekker, what if the Federation was fighting with the Q against even more powerful alien uh, race? And it's, don't like Axanar with an interview old cast people with the younger selves you see fear um i don't you see i don't think that would be a particularly interesting story because if you're talking about godlike creatures like the q um there really wouldn't be anything for our characters to do i mean let's be real what what is a young jean-luc picard going to do against an entity like q uh in if they're destroying the universe the Fringi were, uh, were moving away from capitalism by the end of DS9 anyways. That's true. Uh, or the alien whale probes are back to exterminate humanoids. <laughs> yeah. The whole Maquis arc is closest thing to a civil war. If they were going to be a fed civil war, it would probably have to be a similar issue. Colonies losing their land. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, for it to be a genuine threat, it would have to be a significant portion of the Federation. And keep in mind, a significant number of... Um, uh, of Starfleet because Starfleet is you know a federation wide service so how would Starfleet end up on both sides of this and because if it was strictly civilians that were trying to put together weaponized ships uh it would they would have no chance against the kind of firepower that Starfleet could bring to bear 31 had very bad secrets, more than enough to start a war. Yeah, but you would need to have a compelling, like, you know, for example, Section 31, and I know Bird of Prey tried to argue against this, but I, I and while your your argument about my movie review was dead on Bird of Prey, but the, uh, I think that your argument about Section 31 was somewhat lacking. But Section 31 doesn't seem to have fleets of ships 
Section 31 in a shooting war could not threaten the Federation. Now, they're very good at uh, subverting things and, you know, causing things internally to implode. And they could certainly do a lot of damage to the Federation that way. But as far as an out-and-out -out war, I don't think Section 31 has what it takes. Uh, Burnham could be any godlike alien, thank you. Well, that's true. But we're not, you know. No more prequels. Throw Star Trek Discovery away. Uh, wait a decade for the stink to fade. Then go another hundred years in the Federation's future and build from scratch. I kind of with you on that. I've, I've suggested before that we do a small scout class ship with maybe a crew of a dozen people on an exploration mission on the fringes of the Federation. Star Trek Discovery stank is going nowhere. That's unfortunately true. Uh, there would have to be sleeper cells all over the universe. I'm uh, not sure what you're referring to there, but yeah, probably. Way not to uh, way not to Starfleet civil war between the officers should be uh, should Starfleet go back to a pre Dominion war or stay militarized? Um, except that here's the thing: no, are you going to seriously suggest that the pacifists are going to go to a shooting war because they don't want to be militarized? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I thought Q was cool, but he did F with uh, TNG a lot. Well, yeah, I'm not saying Q is not, in and of himself, Q could be interesting, but if the if the overarching story of a show was that the Q and some even more powerful race were duking it out, there would be nothing for our characters to do in that fight. And so that's my problem with it, is that if you have a war in between gods, then people are irrelevant. What happens if the evidence... Uh, will seem irrefutable and presented on the Federation's Tribunal exposing the Vulcans as being a driving force that created Section 31. The Andorians get mad. Okay. Uh, I could see some of that, except that I couldn't see the Vulcans actually being behind Section 31. You need something that... I think... Here's the thing. What if... If you're gonna, if you're gonna base it on Section 31, and I think that's a good idea, is what you... And here... Okay. I'm... Just, you guys tell me what you think. I, I'm starting to piece together a couple of things that could work. So, uh, somebody find, you know, finds out about some of the shenanigans of Section 31 during the Dominion War. Um, and then they do some digging and they find some other evidence of other things that Section 31 has done. And because they realize that Section 31 was put into the Federation by Earth as a way of controlling things uh, that they couldn't legitimately control. And so because of this, the Vulcans, the Andorians, everybody starts dropping out of the Federation. And it ends up being an Earth versus the Federation type thing. And so starships that are manned by a mostly or entirely human crews would rush to defend Earth while the remaining remainder of Starfleet, which would probably be the majority of Starfleet, uh, would be very much interested in taking Earth out. There's your premise. Um, they can thank Section 31 for winning uh, the Dominion War. Without the Founders virus, they wouldn't have uh, surrendered. You're probably right, but it's still underhanded tactics. Um, and I know, Bird of Prey, you're biased because you're a member of Section 31, but that's a whole other thing. I think they should make a film about the civilians of the Federation and tell stories of different characters in the territory of the Federation, Star Trek universe. Um, I, that could work. Um, I think that would be actually something to do from a different perspective. Um, Luke says, like, you like my idea? Kind of a reverse xenophobia. Exactly. And so it basically... be and. Uh, so you and the thing is, you can build up the tension about it. You can have a few skirmishes, but you try to, you know, you work the series around them, trying to avoid a war. Um, but the Vulcans will be convinced, and if the Vulcans are convinced that Earth is trying to, uh, you know, convert ev or con control everybody through these dishonest means, they may think the illogical thing to do is to take Earth out. Um, and so that's where I think that you could, in fact, build this up and make it very interesting. And then, uh, of, you know, have it maybe in a season or two, it actually become a shooting war. And, you know, but, and then we got to figure out how they resolve it. And, you know, obviously the, at the end of it, we would probably just need to make sure that Section 31 is completely destroyed. Um, 
Civil War based based on organic life and synthetic life. Voyager dance with the idea. I don't like that one, and I'll tell you why. Mainly because I'm on the wrong side of it from the perspective of what most people would do. Um, because I believe that the synthetic life is not alive, and so uh, and I think they would simply try to make it that you're just trying to justify slavery. Uh, the cat is out of the bag, and there's a link there. I'm almost afraid of what it is. It. Oh yes. Uh, so that's the uh, fish. That's the picture that Bird of Prey posted of uh, his Section Thirty One certificate. You should check out the link. Uh, yes, Bird of Prey is in fact a member of Section Thirty One. Shannon throws twenty bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, Shannon. That is too kind of you. Says I got it. The conspiracy parasites come back and take over the Federation Council instead of Starfleet and start effing things up. Member planets secede and the council orders Starfleet to retake the member planet. That could work too. By having a, a, an external force like the conspiracy parasites, I, I could see that working. Um, kind of like Earth belters and Mars in the expanse. See, and that's the thing. We got to figure out a way to create the factions, Mary. I think I like where you're going with that. We need to create the factions and draw the lines, build up the tension, and then what do we do to try and avoid war? Um, yeah, but would that make it good? People, uh, and by the way, of course, uh, I, I sh should go without saying, uh, Shannon, but thank you so much for the, uh, for the generous support. And if you would like to see any of the Super Chat rewards, including the, one of the Mega Chat rewards, if you so choose, you are more than welcome to pick even the bleach-inducing quantum of force. Um, but would... Okay. Uh, yeah, but that would make it good. People like you don't believe they are truly alive makes for better characters. Well, if they... But the problem is, and this is my problem with it, Mr. Miles, it's not that I don't think you could do it and it could be good. It could be a compelling story. And that was one of the first things that popped into my mind about doing a civil war is the sentience of artificial life. But... If you do that, the writers have got to be balanced about it. They've got to show both sides. And if they don't do that, it's it's going to suck. It's going to appear that one side is the bad guys and the other side is the good guys. What's beautiful about The Expanse is that you get as you get to know these characters through the run of the first three seasons of The Expanse, there's no bad guy, right? There's not like, it's not like, oh, Earth is bad and Mars is good, and the Belters are good, or and it's not, though the Belters are bad, no, they all have things that are good about them, they all have things that are bad about them, and it's just a different perspective, and so you need to have good writing to create the situation to make uh, all sides in a, in a civil conflict uh, understandable. Uh, that being said, I think, uh, and Shannon wants mega number three, uh, I will make it known that I will never pick ne Mega number one. Well, good for you, Shannon. I know that a lot of people are relieved to hear that. But Mega Chat number three is the greatest Super Chat reward of all time. In the great hall of the Justice League, there floats the world's four greatest turds. Created from cosmic indigestion, Super Turd! Wonder Turd! Fat Turd! Aqua Turd! And those two junior Super Turds! Lore Reloaded and Punchy the Wonder Cat. I do love the Super Turds. They are freaking awesome. Um, so, uh, so let's talk about. It. So, I like the idea of the parasites. And here's the thing: we could get and, and here. Here's an idea is because if we try to combine some of these things, some of these ideas, if we get the parasites involved to start things off, but we also have, uh, and we have the parasites use the ideas of, say, sentience among holograms and stuff as a catalyst to get the ball rolling on some things. 
And so I think that that could be an interesting way to do it. But here's the problem, Mr. Miles, and why I'm my problem with the sentient life concept is it's not that it's not a good concept. It's that I don't trust the people at CBS to write it well. I mean, look at what they've done with Discovery. And I mean, Discovery uh, might as well ju just flat out be called the the um, the NSWM, you know, Star Trek NSWM. That's that's what the show should be called. Because every character, you know, the the way they tried to build up the characters is that okay, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna push this agenda against um, you know straight white men for whatever reason, and it just becomes it's just becomes so lopsided on the on the politics of it that it takes away from the storytelling. The Expanse, the thing I love about The Expanse, and, uh, you know, I know that uh, Mary gets this when she was talking about it earlier. The Expanse shows multiple sides. The, the, the Expanse shows the, the fact that people from all ethnicities, from all genders, from all places have good and bad to them. And I love the fact that... That in the expanse we meet characters that when we start when we first meet them we think oh this is the bad guy and then you know by the next season you're rooting for that character because you got to know them and you understand where they're coming from and why they're doing some of the things they're doing so i just don't trust the writers at cbs to put out a well thought out well crafted story right now i don't trust them and I don't think that putting out, a, if you're going to do a, a concept of, uh, you know, sentience and stuff, they're just, they're going to turn it into, uh, well, there are conservatives in the Federation that are all a bunch of rednecks and support Trump and they want, uh, they want robots to be used as slaves. You know, that's what we're going to end up with. So I, 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 I'll be completely honest. That's what I think we would end up with. Um, we need a new expanse season. Well, I know that um, Amazon Prime is in the process, I believe, of producing it. Because, yeah, at the end of season three, it's like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. We need to know what's going on next. Um, are the Trek parasites the same as Fry's parasites of Futurama? Not exactly. Uh, they The only thing they have in common is they live inside people. Um, so... I and I just got on on tape the first three Expanse books, so I'm I'm looking forward to listening to how it works out in the book version. And I know there's like seven or eight books at this point, so I'm gonna pro if if the first few, three books are as good as the show, I'll probably get them as well. But I I just I don't know. I think that the um, I, I I just don't see. Kurtzman and the rest of the, the the jokers at CBS as being able to do it. <sighs> Darth Revan says, anti trekker like life, my four times great-grandfather, loving father and grandfather, he ordered the evacuation of crew and removed the arm of one of his crew for something that's hard what to think? What? I have no idea what you're talking about there, Darth. Like life, my four times great-grandfather, loving father, and grandfather, he ordered the execution of crew and removed the arm of one of his crew for something. It's hard what to think. That's brutal, but I'm not entirely sure what you mean. CBS sh could have Nazis take over the Federation. Co yeah, they well, they probably would. Except they wouldn't call them Nazis. They would call them Republicans. Uh, fly Fry's parasites were smart space type weren't yes well and the parasites in, in next gen were very smart but you know unfortunately they could be fooled by gluing a stinger on your neck um, uh, from what I've heard Amazon has picked it up yeah Amazon has picked up the show we're just waiting for uh, when is it going to actually be released and yeah I'm really really looking forward to it because and I will tell you that unlike CBS All Access, I will encourage the crap out of everybody to get Amazon Prime and watch The Expanse uh, when, when that hits. Uh, 
because we need to support good sci-fi. And it's a shame that we don't get much of it. And I'm trying to see if there's any information on season four other than that. Yeah, it's been picked up by sci-fi. We know that. Uh, but it doesn't look like, uh, let's see. It doesn't look like Amazon has said when it's going to, uh, when it's going to air. Not yet. Um, Andy Trigger, the new Star Wars TV series has a budget of $10 million per episode. It's 10 episodes long for a series. That is insane. They are going to lose their shirts on that. That is just stupid. Um, and I think uh, I, I, a lot of people don't understand, you know, the, there's so much waste in Hollywood. There truly is. Um, I And I, Hollywood needs to clean itself up. Uh, they they really do because they're spending you know and and King Waspinator actually made a good video about this uh, I think today or yesterday about the fact that the problem with Star Trek in the films was not that the nobody showed up to see them it's that the films cost too dang much to make. Um, the Belters were tired of getting screwed over, but there was good Belters like Miller, Naomi, and Drummer. Uh, doesn't mean they were tired of yeah. And, and yeah, there were good and bad Belters, there were good and bad Martians, there were good and bad Earthers, and I like that. Expanse Season 4, I'm not expecting until uh, fall of 2019. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything on it official, so I'm just, I can't wait. Uh, Jason Isaacs plays the Federation Council President and starts off by saying, let's make the Federation great again. I could actually see that from these idiots. Uh, Janice says, Andy Tricker, I've been re-watching the original series, and there's a bunch of stuff that are contrary to canon established on TNG in my understanding one being the capability of at will time travel Gary 7 yes that's actually kind of an interesting one is that in because what happened was in the naked time that was when they learned how to actually uh, do the slingshot effect in order to create a time warp and in uh, uh, assignment earth they used that same technique to purposely go to the 1960s and observe the Earth, and that's when they ran into Gary 7. And so that's, uh, yeah, so they did actually have uh, at will time travel, and it was reused, by the way, in Star Trek IV. Uh, the only reason it was difficult in Star Trek IV is because they were in a bird of prey as opposed to a Constitution class starship. Um, so. The, the, and then, yeah, by next gen era, it seems like it's a little more challenging for some reason. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the changes in warp drive. Uh, Mary says, I've read the first five books and two novellas of The Expanse. Very cool. Uh, don't, don't tell me what happens. I don't want to know yet. I haven't watched The Expanse, but I hear it's very good. I really want to watch. You absolutely should, uh, Rainboy. If, if you have not uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you absolutely need to start watching it right now. Seasons one and two are free if you have Amazon Prime. Um, so start today. I, I took forever to watch it. A lot of you guys were begging me to watch it. And then when I finally did, holy crap, was I hooked. And Mrs. Anti Trekker as well absolutely loved the show. So uh, it is what Star Trek Discovery thinks it is. Anti Trekker, Game of Thrones last few episodes were. Runs 15 million an episode, and sci-fi over here is a complete joke and reruns of canceled shows in Sharknado. Well, here's the difference, though. Uh, Game of Thrones is, I, I don't remember if it's HBO or Showtime or whatever, it's on a premium network. And that means that people pay the network money to watch their programming. Sci-fi doesn't get that. Sci-fi only is a uh, basic cable channel. <coughs> and so... They don't get nearly as much money per sub sub subscriber as uh, HBO does. And so they can budget for those types of shows. Uh, Sci-Fi can't. Uh, some shows, the fact that Battlestar Galactica was made on Sci-Fi is insane. And that has a very, that was a very low budget show. It's just that they managed to get, uh, uh, get it to where they could, they could make it work. Um, and so low cost effects... And they underpaid their cast, but yes. Um, and so two million an episode on sci-fi, that is a pretty serious amount of money. And you can absolutely produce. I mean, we saw on the expanse, 
Two million an episode on The Expanse gave us a beautiful show. Um, but the the problem is, is that... And by the way, Resolute, thank you for saying you're going to try The Expanse. I will warn you, The Expanse starts slow. And that's an interesting thing about this show, is that The Expanse starts out very slow, and then it starts to build, and it starts to build, and it picks up pace, and it's building, and it's picking up, and it's building, and then by the time you're like all of a sudden crazy alien stuff and crazy wars and battles and all that, and you're like, whoa, can't keep up... But you got to start at that slow burn, and it works so beautifully. The pacing of this entire show is beautiful. But the first, if you if you just watch the first couple of episodes, you think, "Oh, this is too slow for me." No, give it time. You gotta, you gotta, you pay your dues at the beginning. Random game users, I assume, finished the sandwich that uh, Lori Loda made for you. Good to see you. Um, of course, now that I'm getting ready to sign off. You'd come in and join us. Um, Absolutely, Star Trek Discovery wishes they were as cool as The Expanse. Well, not just that, Mary, uh, but and I've said this before. Star Trek Discovery genuinely thinks that's the kind of show they are. They think that they are this beautiful poster child of crafty storytelling and diversity on a level that we've never seen. That's The Expanse. And however, the, you know, Star Trek Discovery is crap. And they think it's that good. They don't, and that's the biggest problem is that they don't think that there's a problem with the show. They think it's freaking awesome. Uh, will you ever watch Game of Thrones from start to finish when it ends 80 hours? Uh, I probably won't. I watched the first season of Game of Thrones, and don't get me wrong, it's a well made show. Uh, I, and I certainly wasn't saying, oh, Game of Thrones is horrible. Uh, no, I loved it until they killed uh, Stark. When they killed uh, uh, Stark, is it Stark? I thought, think it is, but whatever. Uh, when they killed um, Sean Bean's character, when he dies, I'm like, okay, I'm done. He was the only character that I really liked. Uh, and that was, I know, intentional. He was a great character, and everybody else around him was morally crap. Yeah, Ned Stark. And when and I hated that. When they killed him, I was like, done. I, I, I couldn't watch it anymore. It hurt me too much. Did Lord make me a sandwich? Well, that's what we all assumed. Oh, you went to Taco Bell? Same thing. Lord doesn't make good sandwiches. Um, Star Trek Discovery is crap. Yes, that is indeed true. Star Trek Discovery, yeah. Oh, man. Um, which, by the way, I don't know what you had to say about it, game user, but uh, I'm sure you were saying how Star Trek Discovery is a wonderful family-friendly show, which is why the actress that plays Tilly should indeed be encouraging seven-year-old girls to watch the show and be inspired. Uh, because we all want girls to be inspired to... Uh, rape men and torture people and drop the F-bomb because things are cool. So yes, that's absolutely what the, a seven-year-old should be watching. Um, Game of Thrones is some of the best TV ever created. You're lost. I'm, you know what? That's fine. I, I, and I, but here's the thing. I, and I genuinely, this is one thing that is kind of a funny thing about me. I need good, and I mean morally good, characters in a show for me to latch on to to really enjoy the show. If everybody is dark, if everybody is ambiguous, then I don't like it. Um, and no, he didn't die. Ned did not die in the episode four. He died in the last episode of season one. His, his head was chopped off. That was the climax of, of season one. Um... And, but the, uh, yeah, rape scenes are definitely for seven-year-olds. And torture. We got to show our seven-year-olds more rape and torture. We need that on Saturday morning cartoons. I'm sorry. You know, why aren't the Powerpuff Girls raping the Rowdy Rough Boys? Huh? Somebody explain that to me. Why have we not seen that yet? With their, with their front holes. Um, man, that was bad. Uh, yeah, so, um, but, but yeah, so like with The Expanse, um, I love Holden, uh, and he is our moral center to the series. Uh, and when he strays, other people are bringing him back because of the fact that everybody knows he is the moral center of the series, or well, their universe, you know. And so I love his character, uh, as does my wife. Although my wife loves him for different reasons than me. She loves him because she thinks he's freaking hot. And she also thinks that he looks kind of like what I looked like back 
when we first met like 30 years ago. Uh, your pal Al throws 13 of his fake Canadian dollars in. Thank you so much, Al. Says, hey, anti Trekker, just logged in. I'm super excited because tonight I'm starting a 20-gallon batch of mead with my girlfriend and her family. We're uh, buying about $240 in honey. Wow. Super turds, please. You got it. And, and man, I wish I could get up there to, to steal some of that mead from you. That, oh, that sounds good. That, that truly does. In the great hall of the Justice League, there floats the world's four greatest turds. Created from cosmic indigestion, Super Turd! Wonder Turd! Fat Turd! Aqua Turd! And those two junior Super Turds! Lore Reloaded and Punchy the Wonder Cat. And I have to say, uh, Mr. Miles, I was as shocked as you that Canadians apparently use the term gallons. I, I, I'm, I was expecting him to say leaders. But uh, absolutely. Uh, people follow Hold Limits. He's fair, honest, and righteous. Yeah. And, and I like that character. Um, so. I, I mean, I do think that uh, he's a really interesting character. But, you know, he's not perfect, but he's good. And at his core, he wants to do the right thing. And that's what I want out of a character. A character that truly wants to do the right thing. Not a character that is completely narcissistic. And so... Um, Love Holden, but Amos puts it in a good way following Holden. Holden has a better chance of being right than me. Yes, and Amos is actually, I really like his character. At first, I was like, this guy's a psycho. And I still think he's kind of a psycho, but I, but he's a psycho that I can get into. I, I enjoy him. Uh, anyway, guys, it is getting extraordinarily late. I have to log into work in like two minutes. So, unfortunately, there will not be any uh, post credits shows today. Uh, but thank you all for your generosity, and thank you for a great conversation. It has been an absolute blast. You guys are the best group of people that a YouTuber could ever ask for. And take good care of yourselves. It's the Anti-Trekker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties.